Hey guys, how's everybody doing? How's your Monday? How's your Monday? Hey Sandy, hey Twinkle. Let's see. Right there. It's a beautiful Monday. That's awesome. Hey, Sam. I'm doing great. This is our 2023 book I'm just playing with right now. Waiting for everybody to log on. I have some more anatomy to do. Let's see. For you guys. And then we can do some more. I think I've got anesthesia and radiology. The days are running into each other, and I'm trying to remember what we have done and what we haven't done. <laughs> um. You can just get the um, CPMA study guide and the practice questions and pass from just those. That's what I recommend. They have some practice questions with um, with a with um on the AAPC website. Um, the course is nothing more than basically the study guide. So get those two things, and you'll be just fine. They have one specific for CPMA. I had somebody pass and get their second certification with me um, recently. Who was that? Let me see. Jolene, she also donated um, tutoring hours last year when she passed, but she just got her second certification. She got the CPMA this week, and she also got her CPC, so she's awesome. She also donated some uh, tutoring, two tutoring sessions to people last year, so awesome she just passed her cpma so she's got both certificates with me now it's awesome <clears throat> is the new cpc exam harder than the old one that was two test you know i imagine just doing a hundred questions at one sitting is a lot more difficult than doing 50 at a time. So just having that compartment, I mean, I think that's why they really wanted to switch it over to a new server that could handle all the questions was because they were having too many pass. So I, I, I could imagine that. Tips on the CCA. Yep, 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 yep. All my tips will help you with the CCA, CCS, whatever certification class you're taking right now. Um, I'm going to every single CPT code, and if it has a parentheses, I'm highlighting what was in it, and then marking any do's or do nots for sure. And then if we have any withs or withouts, I'm really looking at the withouts. I don't look at what's after the semicolon. Some other people teach to do that, but I like what's in the parentheses. I find it more often more useful in the questions. Well, let me look for just a second. Well, 
my pocket prep says it's available. And I have a question of the day. Which of the following cancers is covered with exceptions for an initial treatment strategy for an FDG PET scan for a PET scan? Would it be an esophagus, soft tissue, breast, female, or brain? And so what did they say? Which of the following concern, following cancers is covered with exceptions for an initial treatment strategy for an FDG PET scan? Would it be brain, breast, esophageal, or soft tissue? Interesting. And if I go to pocketprep.com without being logged on, I can click through the list of their exams. Let's see. And I can hit medical and find AAPC. Yep, I'm going to click on the medical word, and the very first thing that comes up is 16 exams in medicine is the AAPC, and it says, look, let's go. Here's your free try. It looks like it's doing good for me. It may be a cost is maybe the issue, and if it is, it has a money-back guarantee, pass guarantee, something or another, Um you can also, it says our pass guarantee. You can click on that and see what it says. Um, we want you to be successful. Pass your upcoming exam with pocket prep or we'll provide you with three additional months of access of premium for free. Then um, if it is about cost, then I recommend go into my study group which is free you have to download sorry download the discord app right there and then if you go to my website let me bring that up real quick medical coding by Jen dot com if you go there on the first tab it says social media after you downloaded the discord app which is free you come over here to this page and hit join now. That'll throw you into my Discord and let you join automatically. We have these rooms. So I've got CPC practice exam room. I also have CCS and CCA practice question room, COC, CPMA, um, anatomy. We'll have a bunch of practice questions in there too. And I also have the cases for the ENM right there. But I recommend going in here. All you got to do is scroll back. You will see a year and a half worth of questions with rationale or questions with people making a discussion and figuring out what the answer is. Um, it's completely free and full of information. Just be sure and be respectful of the copyrights that are on these questions. Whatever organization went into writing these for people's courses or for AAPC, you know they're copyrighted. Um, we can use them in a study situation as a group and use them for individual help, but do not copy and share them over the internet or try to resell them. They're here for you to study with as a study group. So there's a ton here for free throughout this whole Discord, um, you just have to do the research and scroll backwards to find them. Super helpful. Super helpful. Look, there's a rationale. Twinkle's post and answers and stuff in here too. Yay. But yeah, that's what I recommend. Am I on chat 24-7 if... I need help. Well, I do have a full-time job working out of California remotely from home. I do have three sons and my mom living here. So, you know, and then I do this as volunteering to try to help you guys pass this medical coding exam. 
and I have to prep for six hours of free lessons, and then I also do tutoring. So I'm not there 24 hours, seven days a week, but somebody is. Um, there's a over 1,500 people in that study group. Somebody's there to help you and answer questions for sure. <laughs> Samantha's trying to send a screenshot and she can't. Oh no, what's going on? When I go to this, it sends me to this download. Do I download this? If you're on your phone, yes, there is a pocket prep app you download. Let's see, let's, do I have it on this phone? I've switched phones so many times. Pocket prep, I must not. I don't have it on this phone. Where's my Play Store? Where's my Play Store? Play Store, Play Store. Yeah, probably. Probably, I just switched phones. Pocket prep. Let's see, that's EMS. No, I want the one for CPC. Pocket prep. CPC. Which one is it? Ah, oh. that's for our AAPC. Upward pocket prep. Is this it? Pocket prep limited. Do I already have it? I already have it. I have it somewhere. Wonder where they put it. They put it under medical po pocket prep. I just gotta find it. Medical, MED. There it is. Yeah. So there's my. That is what pocket prep looks like. This is our question of the day for my phone app, and which of the following cancers is covered? Remember, I was already reading you that one. Which one do you think? It's a perfectly legit thing to download. That way, when you're standing in line at the grocery store, you can absolutely do questions one at a time, whatever. That way you can do them repetitively and get all 500 done. Thank you for the roses. You're awesome. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need an affiliate link with Pocket Prep. I've sent them so many people. <laughs> hey, Cashmere, good to see you. Hey, Walters, thank you for the shares. Yep, and you can join the Discord too, super helpful. But let me tell you, this is awesome too. This is all on the Discord app. Um, this Pocket Prep is, is different. It is a paid subscription. It's $14 a month or it's $36 for three months, which I think is a better deal. And you get 500 practice questions of medical coding. You can go in to build your own questions. It has every one of the subjects that AAPC, CPC covers, and they'll have questions in all of those areas. You can just pick one like E&M, and then you go down here and you just tell them, yep, I want to do all 30, and then hit start quiz, and then you'll have a quiz on E&M. Then you can pick your answer. If you get it wrong, super cool. It'll tell you what the answer is and why the answer is this, and it'll give you a page number of um, where the answer is. So pocket prep is pretty cool, and yeah, I want to quit the quiz, and... It is AAPC CPC, so I think it's pretty cool. It'll give you your stats, tell you how good you are. These are my students who I've had them take some of the questions and see how well they've done. We've hardly gone into the compliance or hip picks questions. We avoid those because there's not very many of them. We mostly stay here in the sections where there's six questions per section, and uh, that's where we play around at. But they keep your stats, tell you how you're doing. Pretty cool. I like Pocket Prep. My Discord is just a free study group that I have set up for you guys. We have a main chat room, which is right there, where you can just have a main chat, talk, and visit. And then I have all these side rooms where I have different certifications different things to help you with med terms. Other people can post things, their favorite books that they've used, that kind of stuff. 
Um, the what to expect on exam day room is where I post how to get the A off your CPC before you even take your exam. It's where some people post updated info on if they passed or not, but um, what kind of computer you need, what kind of software you need, uh, what kind of book prep you need. All that stuff is in here. Just keep scrolling back till you see pictures or things that will help you with um, anything to do with exam day prep for sure. Lots of questions you guys have are already answered in here too. Um, that's really cool room. ICD-10 resources. We can go through copies of books, what people are using. Ah, the coding quiz game. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I have a Jeopardy one, too, that um, I used to have on my um, desktop. I wonder if I still have that. If you want to sell your books or if you want to post how you've um, passed, we have a room for that. And I started a new room this week for, okay, I've got my CPC. Now I'm doing job applications. Those job applications are now um, giving me assessments to see how well I code. And if people send me those job application assessments, then I've been posting them in here so that you can see what employers are having people um, test with before they hire you. I have uh, some of those assessments in here. Sometimes it's part of a patient's note and you just code the note um, sometimes it's an x-ray you code those are in here y'all can debate and discuss and put answers in here for any of them you want um, but these are from current employers who are asking people to do any kind of quiz so kind of cool <laughs> me too sandy me too. Love it when the answer's there. We just have to figure out what it is. So that's a new room I just made. But if y'all got any suggestions on any rooms, I can add them. Practicode is in here if you need help with that. I had several people pass that course, and they can help you out in there. So it is super nice room. Yes, pocket prep. No, Melinda, you don't need pocket prep to um, tutor with me at all. No, not at all. All you got to do is tell me what sections you want to go over. I can do two to three sections per session, so pick your top three. I really need to learn e and I really need to learn ICD-10, whatever you think um, was your lowest scores or your lowest areas, and I'll prep questions for you in those areas and... Have them ready for you that day. <laughs> Thank you, go-kart. Hope it helps. Thank y'all for tapping, getting uh, 1,500 likes already. That's awesome, and four shares. Love it. You're welcome. You're welcome, Melinda. All right, so I got another page up. If you haven't prepped your CPT book, be sure and get that done. And as you're doing your book prep, you can practice questions with me Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays when we do these free lives. And that will all help help you along your path of being a coder. Ooh, I love it when they say, if it's a bilateral procedure, what are we going to do? I love it when the parentheticals tell us what to do. They tell you what modifier or whatever you're going to use. It's nice when they do that. Let's see. Anything else? We've got some do nots. We've got below the knee. Do nots, do nots, do nots. Lots of do nots. This is not in the parentheses, but I know it's AKA names. They put etc. even beside it, but they didn't put it in a parentheses. It's very weird. 
but that should be in a parentheses as an AKA word. Anyway, and then got lots of do nots on this one. We want to make sure that if, if by chance this number is a possible answer, then you go through the possible answers and make sure there isn't an answer that includes that code with one of these codes. Because if it does, that helps you to eliminate one of the answers really quickly and get rid of it. So you're not going to consider it. Awesome. I think everybody should email AAPC asking for a strike through an answer option on the online exam since we don't have any writing tools and can't use a uh, dry erase board anymore. So like with this question of the day thing that, that Pocket Prep had, um, if I go to today's question of the day and what if I wanted to get rid of this? You can strike through some of the answers. At least I know you can on the app. On the, on the, hold on. If I was doing it here online, we can usually, there's a strike through thing. Maybe it's not the question of the day. Well, let me build one. Yes, resume. So let me hit next question. Like for this one, see how it's got the strike through. If I wanted to get rid of that answer, I've already eliminated it. I can hit that button and it will eliminate that answer. And I don't know if y'all could see it, but see it scratches through it. And that's pretty cool. That would be something I would ask for for the online exam so that you can draw on the questions like that at the very least when you've already eliminated one then you can move on and answer the, the right one. I haven't read the question. I have no idea what it's talking about, but that would be really nice if we could strike through some of those answers on the online exam. That's one thing I think they really should get for their online exam since you can't draw on the exam booklet like you can when you're doing it in person. But I think if they got enough request about it, they might decide to buy somebody's to um, write the code for that and uh, solicit that getting done. But they need people to ask for it or demand it <laughs> would be nice. Yep, there's over 5,000 right now on Indeed of remote medical coding positions. Um, you can look on Indeed yourself and see. Um, just put in remote medical coding and hit search and you'll see what comes up. Lots, lots and lots and lots. When it tells me no pencils or anything, so you can't really keep up with where you are at, yep, in the exam. It's really stressful because you, you can look in the books, but you can't even highlight the code in the book and then strike through it if you wanted to because you've got them highlighted. It'd be nice if you could eliminate, no, that's not it, and eliminate that one, and then you can't do anything. You're, you're really hogtied with that online exam. Now, I thought the online exam was less wordy, was more straightforward. I enjoyed it. I liked it, but um, I haven't taken the new one that they have built where it was 100 questions. I took it when it was 50 questions, but I did take it back to back in the same day. I scheduled them two hours apart, but because I couldn't even figure out how to log on to the exam because it was so many weird steps and their email that they send you is not descriptive enough at all. And I've been remote working from home since 2013, so I'm pretty tech savvy. I'm always having Zoom meetings or Google meetings or things that happen that I have to get on to really easily and fast and, and hurry up and get on to them. But um, that was rough getting on to that online exam. And uh, 
even with the email instructions, it was rough. And uh, so I got started an hour and a half late. So then that made me 20 minutes in between exam one and exam two. But I still enjoy it. It, it didn't bother me that I couldn't use anything to scratch anything out. And I couldn't have a pen on my desk. I was, I would have liked to have been able to highlight the codes that were possible answers, but I couldn't even do that. So, but then again, the proctor eventually left and never did come back. So it was weird anyway. So I guess I could have at some point when that person left, but I wasn't paying attention to them. I was busy taking the exam. CPB is super hard, super, super hard. Do the CPC first and then add your CPB. But CPB is hard. Woo! I mean, unless you have some medical coding and billing background, then go for it. But yeah, oh, that's, that's scary. But C CPC is general overall all areas of coding, whether it's hospital, ER, anything, doctor's offices, you can do it all with that one. That's billing. You don't need any classes at all. You can sit for the CPC exam or CPC, CPB without any certification or any prerequisites at all. You just need to pay for the exam and pass. And um, I can teach you from the exam point of view how to pass the exam without having a course. But what I recommend, if you're just starting out with this career, watch my three tagged, where do I do, what do I, they're my TikToks, the three TikToks that are up tagged up front. Recommend you go in there, watching those first, because it teaches you which books to buy, in what order, and all that kind of stuff. Let's see. Oh, the cat lady. So all the ones that are pinned, that one, where do I start? That one right there. And don't tab your books. Anyway, but yeah, start with those three pinned and then keep coming back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and uh, watch my TikToks and you'll get this. You'll get what's going on. Don't forget to go to my website and join the um, Facebook group if you want to. Watch my YouTube videos. They're all free and join the Discord. Um, I have additional help on my website. If you go to members and do join the website, which is free, you can go to CPT Book Prep Room, which has pictures of my notes, and you just click on it, and then it tells you what to do. So you can make up your own notes. Um, that's pretty cool right there. It also goes through the ICD-10 and the anatomy, um, what to do in those areas too. So super helpful. I try to help you you guys out as much as I can. We've got anatomy tonight, of course, and I've got radiology and anesthesia and anything else y'all want to go into. But I do have some new anatomy questions. Absolutely. What else was I doing? I was highlighting, highlighting some stuff. There was a couple for the open procedures. We got to go to a different area. They were noting in the parentheticals, so I'll circle those. And then if we're going to use that code, this 26. It tells you what codes 
it's okay to use it with, which is super helpful to know because some of them you don't use it with, but some of them you do. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Susie, kitty cat paws, thank you so much. Already to 50%, y'all guys are crazy. Thank you. Awesome. All right, can you use the 2021 book for the exam or do I need the most recent? <clears throat> if you're going to take the exam by December 31st, you can use your 2021 book. After December 31st, you're going to have to have a 2022 or a 2023 book. Um, if you do get 2022 books, I have a document that can help you turn your 2022 books into a 2023. I just posted it up last week on Etsy, and it shows you exactly what pages to go to, which codes to delete, which codes to add in on what page, and it's like 20-something bucks, and that way you can go through the book and turn it into a 2023 and have it good for you to take the exam with. But 2021 will only be good for just a few more weeks till December 31st. You're welcome. Did you get anything from anybody on who recently passed? Oh, that's another thing I need to be asking for. So if anybody has taken the CPC exam recently, um, please let me know if you remember anything. A CPT code, a definition, um, a scenario, even a practice question that might have been on the exam. That info is super helpful. I have this ongoing document that I update and I haven't had any info since September, so it's been rough, but yes, who is this? Danny, who just took her exam and passed. I believe she gave me some info, two, bar two paragraphs. I have posted that up on the document. And then Jeanette, who took the exam, had Four, four items she remembered from the exam, and she gave me that. And who else? I don't know who wrote this off the top of my head, but it was on Discord. Hi, all. I took my exam again on yesterday. I'm not sure how I did, but here's some things I remember. There was lab and PA. And it's a big paragraph, and it ends with allograph and a comma. I don't know if there was more info after that comma, because it kind of stopped at that point. So I'm like, I wonder if there's more. But um, it's a big paragraph, and I posted that on the document. I think there was one more person in Discord this weekend that said something, and I... Oh. Where am I at? Discord. And I think it was in our practice exam question room. And I wanted to look and copy that and post it in there. I just have to find it again. So like in the middle of the night, I'll read these things and go, oh, yeah. And I'll do a screenshot of it, but it's nice to be able to. There it is. It was Yuba. Yuba who did that. She's the one that said, I just wanted to share some stuff with you. And let's see, mine ended with something. I need to grab hers. This is the last one that I need to grab and put on that document. She's the one that I haven't done yet. So I got to grab that one. And that's all I've seen. So if anybody remembers anything... If y'all could send that to me, that would be awesome. I'll update everybody and send this out. I don't know if I have any data from anybody that's taken the online exam since it changed in October. I had one lady write me 
in October and she had taken it and she dictated stuff to herself right after the exam. She said she was going to type it out, but I haven't heard back from her. I got to reach out and see if she ever did that. Um, but that would be helpful. Oh, uh, golden air. Don't worry. If you um, get the, you have to ask AAPC for it. They'll only tell you if you passed or failed, but if you call them or email them, they'll send you a, a list of how well you did, like an E&M or the 10,000s, the 20,000s, and give you a breakdown of all your scores. If you could get a copy of that, that's super helpful um, in getting a strategy. Thank you so much for um, getting the TikTok goal. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Now we just need our subscription goal met of like 26. So we've got 14 subscribers now to the TikTok who were put in for the drawing for the free um, notes and the free uh, tutoring sessions. And I've got their money, their names in the cookie jar and I'll get the boys to draw out some names today. Also the TikTok subscribers are put in yes and then the youtube subscribers are put in too so they got an extra extra one plus everybody that emailed me got their names put in it um, your instructor told me if i took my test in january or february it should be fine and doesn't think in the past typically i haven't seen the exam truly be reported back saying it changed um, until like April, but you never know about a APC. I don't work for them. I don't know the inner workings. They always tell us and they post in it directly that you have to have an updated book, but I doubt they will let you take the exam with the 2021 CPT book in 2023. If that's your question, that your teacher told you you'd be okay? It, was she talking about a 2022 book? You should be okay. But I do have that document up if you just want to write in the new codes. Super helpful. But I don't know. I remember when I took my exam in person, I brought 2018 books and it was 2019. And they were like, you're going to miss like 12 questions. I said, that's okay. And they said, okay, but I wonder if they would have let me bring a 2020 or a, a 2017 set of books. I don't know. I took mine on Saturday, meningitis, infant circumcision, fingernail avulsion, Yep. Sounds familiar. Did you get exam B? That sounds so familiar. I test on next Monday. I subscribe to the YouTube today. Good job, Jessica. Awesome. I hope you enjoy it, especially all the extra workshops you get to watch. There's 12 of those on there. The e &M is super good. There's two of them, two workshops I did on e &M. I did the membership on YouTube. So much great information. Yep, you get all the extra book prep videos. So you get to see me watch and update the codes individually. What do you, what do grade do you need to pass? A 70. You need a 70. Thank you, Susie contributing to the live gold you're awesome how many variations of the exam are there i think there's four to five maybe even six variations taking mine on december 9th awesome nervous but all i can do is see see how it goes yep Awesome. How long in advance do we 
book the test or AAPC is booked out? Good question, especially down here at the end of the year. Many sites are booked, but keep checking every day because people will chicken out and say, okay, I just can't do this now. I'm going to cancel and they will cancel and then a seat will open up. So keep checking daily. If you find that your city or town has um, booked, you can do a different state or city if it's feasible for you to get there. Um, my Arizona state, the testing site is in Phoenix. Well, that's five hour one way drive for me. But if I go to Nevada, another state, go to Las Vegas, it's two hour one one way drive. So I took mine in Vegas. So you can always do that. You're welcome. Red, you're going to pass, girl. I know you are. Um, if you take it online, I mean, I knew the next day. Some people have known with the new system the same day if they passed, if you take it online. Um, I guess it just depends on your luck and the proctor turning in all the stuff that they're supposed to be turning in and doing and hitting buttons um, also ha plays a role in it. Um, but I hear it's pretty quick right now. Same day for me. There you go, Nana. There's a hundred questions on the test, which is a shy better than what I did. It was 150 questions and almost a six hour exam. Plus she still had the four hour drive time there and back. It was brutal, but it was worth it. I enjoyed going in person. I highlighted all the codes that were on the exam as possible answers. Then I came home and I studied those codes and figured out, okay, well, out of this chapter that has so many pages, they only pick codes in these certain areas in this chapter. Why did they pick those codes in that particular section? Is it because those surgeries are more difficult? Do they have um, posterior or anterior differences? Uh, what's the big deal? Why did they pick these codes out of that whole chapter? And I audited that exam, um, studied it on which codes they picked and looked for patterns in why they picked certain codes and came up with a game plan to pass it the next time I took it and passed real easy and uh, didn't have any trouble and I'm just trying to pass these techniques on to you guys. That's, Jessica, that's an average exam. Um, answers for um, 35 is, is just about average. That's a little bit over average than what most people get. Some people get around 28, 26 to 32. When they take it the very first time, the questions are very similar. They're just going to be written differently. Some of them will be harder. Some of them will be easier. Um, but yes, those, they're going to be exactly like that or what you find on Pocket Prep. And be sure to make notes about those questions in your CPT book. And um, take those exams over and over again and you don't have to do them 50 questions at a time you can answer one question and then scoot you down to the bottom and hit grade nobody's keeping score you don't have an unlimited or a limited time to hit grade if you only have 10 minutes while the kids are in the tub then go do one question make some notes on it and then hit grade and if you get it right wrong whatever Go look and see why the wrong answers are wrong and why the right answers are right. Don't just memorize, okay, this is question, this is exam A and question one is always D. Don't memorize, you know, the answers. Really dive into those questions. What terms did they use in those questions that make up that exam? 
So like I'm doing, um, I'm almost, I'm getting close to being done with anesthesia. I'm just kind of waiting on a, to find some new questions from AAPC for 2023 to happen out. But like if I was doing anything and had some questions, like an example at a patient with a history of uh, mastectomy returns for reconstruction surgery on a single trans flap for the right mastectomy for asymmetry, to make her asymmetry, the answer was 00402. And then any words that were in here describing that surgery that are not in the CPT code descriptor that I want to add, that's super helpful too. So stuff like that. Let me put this sucker away and we'll get out our 2022 books which are pretty much written up the same dang way, but a little different. I always add something every year and make new updates. I learn more about what you, you guys need every year, too, and add more data each year I update them. You can use my 2023 notes to update your 2022 or 2021 books, so don't worry about that. Um, anatomy quiz. Let me scooch you up to our, just getting the laptop down, scooching up to where I wanted to start tonight. If I can find it. Let's see. Nope, 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 nope. We already did these. These are the new ones. Here's the new ones. All right. I have to draw me some big old lines so I can tell where we started out. No, the class was not worth it. I'm so sorry. Good gracious. <laughs> I'm so glad you like the notes. So for the NHA, uh-huh. How many questions are there? I don't know. I haven't researched that one. Plus, they won't let you sit for that exam unless you've taken their course. So I don't have any personal, um, I'm not gonna pay for a course just to take a certification exam for medical coding. So I don't have any idea on that one. I'm sure there's plenty of info on the NHA website. I just got as far as that point is that they wouldn't let you take it. I would love to take it. I want to take the Ahima one too. Um, I just haven't had the time. Stuff is busy. I have to wait till after my real job audit is over with in March. Once that thing is done, so maybe this summer, June, July, I'll take the Ahima test and see in person how that one compares to I want to take both of them, the CCA and the CCS, which I know is tougher, it has some billing stuff in it, but um, I'll take both of them, see, see how they do, see how I do, because <clears throat> that'll only let me help you guys too better, but I'm not going to pay for a course for NHA just to take that certification unless they give it to me free or super cheap. <laughs> We'll see. <clears throat> Sorry if I did not get to all y'all's questions. Just, uh, Hot Rod, do you have any coding books at all right now? If you've already got the 2022 books and, you know, you don't have money to burn, then just keep those books. You'll be okay. That's perfect TikTok, Mom. That's what I did, too. Yeah. If you've already got the 2022 books, I've got a document up that'll turn your 2022 CPT into a 2023, and you'll be good to go for a whole another year. So it's, it's like 20-something dollars. It's up on Etsy if you want it. But you'll see enough of my 2023 book, too, throughout the lives so that you could probably... 
pause the screen and make notes too as it goes along. If you do the YouTube subscription, which I think is like four or five bucks, then you get to see the book prep videos after I do the lives. Everybody gets to see the lives, but then the YouTube subscribers get to see them and replay them afterwards and pause screens and stuff. So you can make some updates there too. All right, guys. Answer for the droop. I hate how um, Word document thinks all these are spelt wrong. <laughs> It is D. Very good. Good job. There's the definitions for all of them, just in case you need it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good job. Good job. You can swipe right or something. Yes, yeah, swipe right, and it gets rid of all the chat, and then you can do a screenshot um, without the chat being involved on any of these you need. Just please do not... Um, repurpose these questions, sell them over the internet because they're not my questions. So I get these from real people that have something to do with AAPC and CPC. So they have, and I pay for their questions. So we want to honor their copywriting. Just use them for your own personal use, please. All right. Defined suturing. What is defining suturing? Which one? If it's like this one's, where do we do most of our suturing? We do most of that in integumentary. So in the beginning of the integumentary section, which is also called the surgery section, which is weird, but you've got that picture of the um, structures of the skin. You've got a lot of white space there. You can add definitions to. And then again, on the next page, they have half the page is blank um, on page 92 if you're in the 2022 CPT book. And I put a ton of definitions there. You can always find creative ways of putting definitions wherever you need. So stuff like that, even use the top. So I always try to put things in the beginning of the chapter so that I know everything's at the beginning if I'm looking for a definition or something. Yeah, the first one was D. This one for suturing is B. The two R's remind me, I don't know why, but I think of those two R's as my two sticks that I'm going to use in crocheting to make make um, stitches. I just associate those two R's as stitches. That's just me. You know. However y'all want to associate terms. But there is the definitions of the other ones. All of them. So that just in case you needed them. <clears throat> I had a frog in my throat for the last week and a half. Jeez. I wish it'd go away. I need more hot tea. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the shares. All right. In radiological positions, which one is defined as erect, facing forward, arms rotated outward, and palms forward, Hands open with thumbs pointed out and feet together. My goodness, what a mess. I got confused just reading that. <laughs> yes, all my repeat lives are posted onto YouTube. And it's under Medical Coding by Jen. If TikTok records them, of course, and um, sometimes they lose the data, but last November was rough. They lost a bunch of them, but hopefully. Answer is A. 
anatomic position. Perfect, and here's your definitions for all the rest. You're welcome. That one was A. That one was A. This one, which cardiovascular combining form is defined as muscle? Pretty easy one here, especially with what their options are. Hey PJ, good to see you. Hey Leah. A is also correct in this answer. Here's the definitions for the other ones. Be sure you know the differences between veins and lungs that might come up. Sclera is hard. Thanks, Susie. I love the dinos. Those are cute. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the support. All right, which of these is defined as too much pressure? from fluid that leads to a hypertensive condition. Very tricky one. I wonder if I'll catch anybody on this one. I go to lives every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6.30 Arizona time zone. Right now it is 7.30 here in Arizona. I think it's like 9.30 in like New York and Florida, right? And in California, it's 6.30. <laughs> the rest of the country is so hard to keep up with. Well, I did see a lot of correct answers, and then now I'm getting a bunch of incorrect ones. It is A again. It is glaucoma. Isn't that crazy? Hypertensive condition causes glaucoma. I always thought it was diabetes. But it's the pressure of the blood going through your um, bloodstream. It makes these little white flecks of your arteries and veins and things fleck off and then get deposited on the lens of your eye and uh, leave a cloudy film. Thank you Judy for the follow. Hope I can help you out. Thank y'all for all the likes. One of the following, oh of the following, which is defined as a radiography of an organ in motion. Which one has an organ in motion while it's taking a picture of it? Your nan had glaucoma? Yep, that's what it means. My mom had glaucoma too. We had new lenses put into her eyeballs by an eye doctor. Really cool. I upgraded her lenses from whatever Medicare paid for um, to highfalutin lenses. And now she can see better than I can. <laughs> and she's 71 and I'm 51, but she can see better than I can now. It's crazy. Ooh, got lots of D's and A's. And some C's. Chris, you got to keep that blood pressure under control. Yep, Medicare pays for standard le lesions. Um, more hypertension um, that leads to glaucoma is more of the genetic component that leads to that. 
Yep, it was an extra thousand dollars each eye for her special lenses. This one is C. It kind of reminds me of Cinderella's dress when I see that. C-I-N is all that really matches besides the A. But I think of Cinderella's dress moving, you know. She's flowing at the ball and uh, leaving her shoes behind. Yeah, so I always think of that is in motion. I have to do association if I learn anything. So, yep. Correct, Miss. Can be congenital. You can be born with them. <laughs> you think about movies too. <laughs> Thank you, Sunshine. Sunshine is number one, it says <laughs> to me. You must be my number one um, subscriber because it's it's got that, it's telling me that. That's funny. Yay, thank you guys. All right, let's see. Another position for radiology is where the beam is entering the back of the body and exiting the front. What are we doing? Don't forget in the very front of your CPT book, in the middle of some of those X's and I pages, you've got a page um, in the 2022 book, it's XXIV that you can add to, which you need to add to, because not everything's listed here, but um, a lot of these body planes and body positions are listed there, and that's a really good page to update all these questions. You can add those definitions to that page. We'll help you out. And that is posterior to anterior. Very good. Back to front. That's what those things mean. Perfect. And here's the definition for all of them. Good job. Thank you for the almost 4,000 likes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Got 108 of you. I hope this is helpful. Which respiratory term is defined as voice? Um, XXIV. Is that it? Yep. XXIV. It's in the very front of the CPT book. XXIV. Really good place to put that. You're welcome. Thank you for all the likes. Everybody going D for voice? Perfect. It is. Here's the definitions for the rest. We've got puncture, breathing, surrounded, and voice. Good job. We had surrounding on Friday as one of our vocab words. And that live is up on YouTube if you need it, plus the rest of them from last week. To determine medical necessity, many codes must distinguish what factor of the diagnosis. Very interesting question. Never seen this question before. So from the health plan's point of view, many codes must distinguish what factor of the diagnosis. Is it the conditions can be treated by prescriptions? The conditions are acute or chronic? The patient has been, has seen the correct specialist or the physician completed thorough enough diagnostic testing? Not tricky for you guys at all. <sighs> Yes, if it's acute or chronic. Yep. And do you know when you can code an acute or chronic situation? A 
according to our guidelines, if we are going to code a patient with acute and chronic condition at the same time, we can do that as long as we meet this vertical line guideline, which is in the very front of our ICD-10 book. If you come to the ICD-10 book, this happens to be the 2022 AAPC version of the ICD-10 book, which I'm on page 39. This vertical line, the, the vertical yellow line appears at the second and fourth indention throughout the index. That is solely for the purpose of that guideline of acute and chronic. Or am I on the 2023? Is this 2023? What year is this? Oops, sorry. I am on the 2023 book, so I might be on the wrong page for you guys. Sorry. But it's just the very first page for the index, which is right after the stuff. But we have a guideline one of our very first guidelines, once they get through telling us all about the abbreviations and stuff, our very first guideline right here is acute and chronic, which talks about the alphabetical index, the same indentation level code both and sequence acute first. So this yellow line, if you didn't know already, throughout the book, if acute and chronic are on the same line, indented in the same spot, then you can code them on the same day at the same time and code acute first. An example of that is like, um, uh, let's see, I like that T word, thrombo something thyroiditis or something like that, right? Therapy. No. I don't know if I got it highlighted in this book because therapy. Therapy's not in it. Thank you for the tiny dino. Super cute. Let's see. Nope. I know it's around here somewhere. There it is, thyroid. Ooh, let me get my fingers out of the way so my camera can focus. All right, where we go? Right there. Thyroiditis. You see how acute and chronic are on the same yellow line? That means you got a thumbs up. You can code that at the same time on the same visit. And that's the sole purpose of that yellow line throughout that index. Just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Kind of looks like the, the one for Princess Diana. I got it in uh, Park City, Utah. Little vacation town up there. Really pretty place. They, I think they pretty much have snow all year long on a vacation last year or two years ago actually right after COVID started lifting we still couldn't swim in a lot of the swimming pools around um, in the hotels but we found one on that three or four day trip that we could swim in <laughs> that's close to you all you got live up in the pretty country you didn't know that Karen well I'm so glad I taught you something new that was something um, that I never knew too until I started um, writing up the guidelines for you guys. And when I ran across that acute and chronic and it talking about the indention line on the index, I was like, what the heck does that mean? That whole sentence was weird. And then I went to the index and saw that sentence above the index that mentioned it again and put two and two together. I had to figure that out on my own, <laughs> what the heck that meant. But I went through those guidelines. And when I make up notes for you guys that if you wanted to purchase them, 
I go through every single word and I want to know exactly what they mean. Hold on, my children are coming in. What? Is it okay if you can play a game? Absolutely not. You are still grounded. Nope. You can't even go back to school yet. You're still suspended. So, I don't think so. But while you're here, can you draw me a winner from our cookie jar since my love is here? Come here, Jaybird. Please. Okay, I'll take you off camera. If I take you off camera, will you come here? Yes. Okay, you're off camera. I can see the camera. <laughs> my TV is riding me out. Okay, come on. Come on. There's my Lester. He's sitting beside me guarding me. This is Jaybird. He's honest. How many? Stick your hand in there. I don't know. And there's everybody's stuff. You, mean you don't know how many? I don't know. Uh, pull me out three. 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 Yeah, three. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you, Jay Bird. You pretty boy. But no, you're still grounded. No video games. <laughs> That's my James. All right. Um, tutoring. Free tutoring. Oh my gosh, if I can get my camera to focus, focus, dang you. Free tutoring goes to, goes to our head five, five. Free tutoring. <sighs> if you want to enter in these contests where I force my children on TV, all you got to do is send me um, an email and put raffle in the header. And I'll enter your name into the raffle. Yep. So this one gets tutoring. <laughs> oh, that's you. And you're one of my subscribers, too. So your name got put in there a couple of times, probably, if you emailed me, too. So that's awesome. Congrats. Yay. And your exam is on the 10th. Okay, let me write this down real quick. Hold on. December 10th because time is really 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 crazy for me guys right now because of course it's Thanksgiving week and I have people coming in from out of town so Aunt Shy and Uncle Chris will be here Friday and Saturday and Sunday and then my oldest oldest son which he's actually my oldest kid's best friend since junior high he's 30 years old now both of them are but I consider Gabe another son. He's coming Monday, and he's spending almost two weeks with us. So um, things are crazy. But Red, congratulations. Free notes goes to... Hey, Travi. What's up, Travis? My other child is coming in. Hold on. Free notes goes to Vanessa. And that's all I had on Vanessa was that name and this one Tate it's free notes too what do you want Travis? Hi. hi what are you doing my other pretty baby my other pretty baby yeah what are you doing mm. you coming in to say hello mm. did you play your game is it charging oh I'll still play I was just seeing what you're doing I'm doing good all right, all right. These get free notes. Let me make notes on these real quick. Put y'all back up here. <clears throat> Vanessa, I wrote her in purple. What did purple mean? Oh, I knew I should have wrote these down. I did them in color coded, so that makes me remember where they were. Like red was obviously TikTok people, and then. Green was, I believe, YouTube people, and purple was emails, free notes, free notes. But uh, R head fifty five, you just gotta let me know what day is best for you during the week, and if you have a um, account already on my website at Medical Coding by Jen, there's a way to message me there. 
message me there, and then that way um, tell me what day you would prefer of the week um, to do tutoring and time of day. And that way I can schedule it right there because that's where the Zoom link comes from, is from my website. And then Vanessa and Tate, just anywhere, either on Discord or Messenger or back in email, just message me what you want. If I don't have the notes ready yet, like if you want to wait on 2023, uh, just let me know. Whatever you prefer, which section you want, get those to you. And if you want to enter in, some more drawings will be done, absolutely. Just put raffle in the header for me. That way I'm not going into the email. I can just start writing Danes down and putting them in the cookie jar. All right. But that's interesting. He drew from all three colors, so I think... One's for email entries, one's for TikTok entries, and one color is for YouTube entries, and he got one of each. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, I think. I like that. I did pick names. Oh, sorry. Here we go. I got, she got free tutoring, and these two got free notes. But I still got names and cookie jars, and we'll draw some more. Um, free tutoring sessions with me or free copies of my um, book notes, whether it's CPT or ICD-10 or whatever. These notes help you pass the exam a little bit easier. So that kind of stuff. Just the only things that I charge for is what their drawings are for. <clears throat> All right, guys. So this one, obviously the answer was B for acute and chronic, and there's a rationale behind that question. You're welcome. I see you later, Leah. You can watch the repeat live when it gets onto YouTube too. Thank you for uh, the 14 subscribers and 13 dinos and we've got almost 5,000 likes and 10 shares who passed who passed Kimberly passed yay that's great Kimberly oh it's trash night I got the trash cans are already out there who 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 Where's, where's her thing? I'm trying to take a picture of her little message. <laughs> there we go. She passed her HEMA exam. Awesome. <clears throat> I do help with CPMA. Um, I had the course that they gave away for free, so I've got the whole course and all of its practice exams, and then I have the paid exams for that. I can go over those questions with you if you need any help figuring out why the answers are wrong or right or whatever's going on with those questions that came with the course and stuff. <clears throat> Congratulations, Kimberly. I hope I helped out in a little bit with your Ahima for sure. Love it. So happy for you. That's awesome. Of the following, which relating to mesh work for draining an aqueous humor? I was so nervous about taking this exam. I know, anointed. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. I hope it made it less stressful for you, at least. But also finding answers and uh, doing the process of looking for similarities and doing eliminations based off coding irregularities. I'm praying for the same results myself on Sunday, stressing out. Don't stress. 
Think positive thoughts. You are going to pass on Sunday. That's all there is to it. You are. Open-minded, positive. Put it out there in the universe that you've already passed. Like I have with Red, I know she's passing. Even though she keeps putting it off, I know she has passed. In my universe, she has already passed. So she's going to pass whenever she decides to take it. Mm -hmm. Which one of these is talking about drainage of aqueous humor? You bald. Aw, that's awesome. Congratulations again. That's awesome. Anointed keeps putting it off too. Aw. She was a subscriber too. I know her name was in there a couple of times too. Some A is correct. No, no, it's C. Sorry. It is C for some reason, right? Yeah. Let's see. Plaque means lens, but... And, and that's why you're getting this for the eyes. That's what I was thinking about is the eyes. But this one, the meshwork is the most important thing. And this one is like a tubular thing and it drains down into the sinuses. So we were looking for that one. But there's your definitions. I had scheduled my test because I work best under pressure. So let's hope that holds true. You go, TikTok mom. That's awesome. I work best under pressure, too. I always let deadlines get very, very close, and then I work so well. <laughs> I can really concentrate. If my deadline is really far out, it's so hard to stay focused and get it done. Yep, yep, I'm the same way. <clears throat> yep, Kimberly's the same way. Which of the following medical terminology root words mean sleep? This one will be easy. Nicole's the same. I scheduled mine last night. And I have all this week to cram. Awesome. And the kids are off of school. I feel the same way. My kids are home this week. It's driving me nuts. Yep, 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 yep. My little demons. A is the answer for this one. Yep, narcolepsy. We have words that mean this all the time. Sleep. Mm-hmm. Which of the following prefixes means against? Good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're such a good boy. Yeah. Such a good boy. Nice kitty cat. Everybody thinks C? C is correct. Here's the definitions to the, all of them then. Good job. How many more do I got? We got to get over to the, some of these other ones. Let's see. Here's another one. Radiological projections is defined as an x-ray beam entering one side of the body and exiting the other side of the body. Oh, which one would that be? Got B's and C's? Took a, just take a deep breath. <laughs> Pray and, uh, Imagine I'm on your shoulder, whispering in your ear. Don't you read that question. You go to the answers first. <laughs> go look at the code definitions or headers first. Go look at your headers first before you look at the question. Check your headers. If you have codes with different headers, then great. Go eliminate that first. If all the codes are under the same header, then look down at the code descriptors Get your one word differences, whatever those differences are, search the question for those differences. That's it. Don't read about who they are, how old they are. Unless that difference makes a difference in picking out a code, you don't need to know it. 
Just keep on going. You'll finish early and you won't have any trouble passing if you do it that way. C, lateral is the answer to this question. Good job. Yeah, they send you lots of rules. That's okay. Which of the which of the following just describes an intronus? Anybody know what an intronus is? I think I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you for the 5,000 likes and the 10 shares. Awesome, awesome, awesome. B is the answer. And here's the definitions of all of them. This one was on my exam when I took it way back when. Per diem has, seems to have been on the exam a lot early 2022. I haven't read what people have put, told me that was on it this month. Um, I copied and pasted it onto the document, but I haven't read through it. So I got to read it, take time out to read what they're saying have been recent vocabulary terms. All right. Which of the following medical term means nucleus? Anybody know this one? We'll do this one and we'll end it here. I don't know how many more I got on here. I seem to be going on forever. And we'll go do some real coding. Nucleus, we got C's and D's. We got to think way back to our elementary days, junior high. We were dividing the cells and stuff. There you go. Narco means to sleep, of course. We've got K-Y-P-H. P-H reminds me of a humpback, so I can remember that. And then K-Ro means, reminds me of syrup, which kind of looks like a, a dollop of pancake syrup, which looks like the nucleus of a cell. I don't know. <laughs> That's what it means to me. I think of that. And etos means cause. All right, let me bring up my... Do we want to do anesthesia or radiology? Anybody have a preference? Yeah, radiology. Lots of radiology. 30 more minutes. Thank you, Twinkle. We can go back and forth. I got several of both options. Lots of radiology. What is this one? This one's radiology. Okay. Am I supposed to be way up here? So let's look at just the answers first. We're not going to care about what the question says. We've got two that start out with the same answer. There's usually a reason for that. Don't forget about that during the exam. So let's go to that first. 74160. We'll do a little bit of both. Oh, she's a rad tech. Awesome. You ready to get out of patient care? Patient manipulation? I used to shoot x-rays too back in the day when um, medicine wasn't that regulated. I mean, 
anybody clinical on the floor could do anything. I drew labs, I shot x-rays, whatever it was, we could do it all <laughs> back in the 90s. Um, you know, I don't know, it was crazy, but um, I shot a, quite a few in the hospital and the doctor's offices in my day. But I've never been licensed to do so. But back in the day, I didn't need it. All right. 74160, which is scary to think about. But <laughs> I literally just, uh-huh, looked at the grid and said, okay, this weight gets this much radiation and did the dials on the machine and hit the button. There you go. Is back in the day when I used to have to pull out the film and stick it in the machine and then it would come out and then I'd have to put it in the other chemical to get it. Yeah, we had to hand dip those things. It was crazy. That was a long time ago. All right, 60. We had to do it all in a dark room when we pulled the film out. That was fun in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep I used to do it back in the day when we had dark rooms sure did alright so we're at our mama code is the 50 yeah so you have to look at your 50 because that code 60 includes everything that Mama is up until the semicolon. So after abdomen, we end it. So we know we're a CT of the abdomen with contrast if we're at 60. So let's see what our question is. Are we doing a CT of the abdomen? And this says, and pelvis. Is that what this thing does? It only does the abdomen. So this probably is not the right answer. Let's look up the other ones. 74176. If I go there. And our 78. So 76 is our mama code. It is abdomen and pelvis without contrast. Did we use contrast? They used oral contrast. Does that mean we use contrast? Let me move this up. Does that mean we used contrast if we used oral contrast? Yes or no? We have a guideline for this. If you're in the 2022 CPT book, we're on page 525, first column, second column, sorry. Second column, last sentence on that first paragraph, oral and rectal contrast administration alone does not qualify as a study with contrast. It'll be on the exam, guarantee you. No matter what you're taking, CPC, CCA, whatever, that will be on the exam. Make sure you know that oral contrast means you gave no contrast. Page 525, second column, last, first paragraph, whatever, right before written reports. It's that last sentence. 525. You're welcome. That will be on your exam 100%. It's always either in a question or they'll directly ask you, is oral and rectal contrast. So that means we did without. That means A is our answer all day long. Thank you for the follow. Page 525. Yep. A is our answer. 
All right. Here's our next answers, possible answers. Don't go to the question first. These are all going to be super close, but I think the 50 and the 55 are closer than anything else. Let's go and go look at those codes first. Set so you are welcome, JR. Thank you. I'm happy to help. I hope I make a difference. I want to make sure, I mean, if y'all can pass this exam and then get an online job from home, making real good money, a stable income, because the healthcare system ain't going nowhere. We're going to be needed no matter what. They can't make computer programs to do all this. If I can make a difference and help you pass this exam to get a better income, get you in the healthcare field, which is really handy to be in when you get sick or any of your family members get sick. I mean, it's just a really great career. I've loved my medical career since day one and uh, best decision I kind of fell into. I never knew what to do with my life. You know how some kids are always like, I'm going to be a fireman and they go do it. And that's what they've done their whole life. I never had a clue what to do with my life. And I just happened to run into a really cool career. Love it. All right. 744 five five and five oh our differences are because they both start out the same one of them's retrograde one of them's for voiding is one major difference one's bladder and urethra and the other one is dealing with ruptures of the bladder or blood clots stuff like that of the bladder so are we dealing with kidneys and urethra bladder or just the bladder? So we got, what are we doing? We got the voiding. Isn't that in one of our CPT descriptors? We do have it in one of our descriptors. We've got it in the 55. It says voiding. And they're looking for reflux. I have in my notes that 74455 is for reflux or kidney infections. And I have that 50 is for blood clots. So I would put 55 as my answer. Thank you, Jessica. So if you haven't done so, you know voiding is going to be a main keyword that you can highlight underneath 55. You can also put or add reflux to it too, now that you know that that's the correct answer. Um, things like that. Anytime you get practice questions from AAPC, I recommend going through here and finding any little thing that isn't written in the CPT code descriptor that is written in the question that you can add to your notes so that you eventually end up with notes that look like mine. And that's how I get my notes and my answers or my notes from those questions. Super handy dandy to do it that way. Thank you for all the little dinos. Those are so cute. And the hearts. Susie, you're number two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jessa. Jessica, too. Yep. All right go down to this one. Let's look up our differences here. We've got 01 and 05. Mm, those are close. And then we could do our 11 and 15. So let's go to our first one in numerical sec sequence first. The 76801 76801 
I think it's much more efficient to teach or to learn from the exam point of view than it is to try to do this from a coding point of view because the coding's already been done for you. These, This is the answer. The answer's right in front of us. We just have to pick it out. And if you're trying to learn how to code, well, you don't code these scenarios, so it's not going to help you to index anything. You need to learn how to pick out the correct answer in the fastest, most efficient way possible. And that's why I teach it totally different from all those paid teachers for these courses and stuff. This one is first trimester. Um, anything of fetal and maternal evaluation. This is first trimester. Let's see, our 05 is second trimester. Our 11 is, is that first trimester? Nope. It's just saying they're doing the mama evaluation. This one's a mama evaluation and baby, but mama mostly. And then 15 is for chromosomal defect? No, heartbeat, heartbeat and position. This one's a quick look. This is a quick. We're just looking for the heartbeat and position. So are we in first, second trimester? Mostly looking for mama's abnormalities or a quick look for position and heartbeat. What have we got? We're doing maternal evaluation. And we're looking for anatomic examination. <laughs> I wish you to know me too, anointed. Sorry. I sure do. That's that's a lot of money to pay for for those classes. So we're not we're not doing the first trimester. We're not doing the second trimester. It doesn't say anything about uh, position or heartbeat. So that gets rid of that one. So you know your answer is C. Even if you didn't know much, you could get rid of the heartbeat and position because the question didn't say anything about that at all. And then it didn't say anything about first or second trimester, which are key points. And that leaves you with C. But C does the anatomic ev examination. And my note says mom and baby eval single on that one. Let's do one more x-ray and then we will move on to... Um, Anesthesia. There we go. Lost the word for a minute. This one's cool. It's just going to be a difference between the 46 and the 47. Let's go check out our codes first and see what our differences are. 710. 710. It's a lot better when you're going through 100 questions to only carry, what, I carried four words with me. I didn't read none of the other cut words to the next question, then carrying all 50 of those words with me to the next question. By the time you do 50 questions, if you had 50 words, 50 questions, your brain would be spinning. But if you only had five words times 50 questions, you're gonna, your brain's still not going to be fatigued. So another reason why you don't want to read the questions. We are not in grammar school anymore. So don't read the questions. We got two views here and the 47s have three views. So all we need from there, first off, to get us down to a 50-50 shot is figure out how many pictures did we take of the, of the body. Two or three views. So they're not going to make it easy. They're always obviously not going to say two or three, but they're going to give you positions, right? So you're going to look for 
the positions. We did like AP and lateral or something like that. So what did they do? They did AP and lateral were performed on this patient. So does that mean we did two views or three? Yep, that means two views. We can get it down to A and B. Do we need a professional component on this code right here? Does a chest x-ray come with an interpretation automatically? Or do you have to put the 26 modifier on it? Do we have to change that CPT code descriptor to make us get an interpretation? And you know, if you, probably most of us have had a chest x-ray once or twice in our life. I'm trying to think. I don't think I ever have. I've shot a million of them. But I don't think I've ever had a chest x-ray. I've had a finger x-ray. But fingers, chest, legs, those kind of things, they all come back with a report saying what happened. Other ones like MRIs or things like that that are specialty where they don't want you to bring a report back. They want you to bring the actual films to your doctor and the doctor will look at your films. Those kind of things, if we wanted a special report written or an in interpretation, um, you would add a 26 modifier to it. But simple things, this chest x-ray does not require a 26 modifier. We don't have any speciality that needs to happen. All radiologists can give their own interpretation on a chest x-ray. MRIs and CT scans are another, another can of worms, but these routine things like this do not ever need that 26 modifier. A lot of times the CPT code descriptor will tell you, this one actually doesn't, but you can write it in and say that um, your um, interpretation and reporting is included. Let's go to, or just simply write no 26 on it. So you know not to build the 26 modifier. All right, anesthesia, anesthesia, movie over. Let's go check out these. So we've got two 61s, two of them listed. It's listed twice with another code. I bet they just want to know if we know if we should add that or not, knowing how AAPC writes questions. So let's go to 00561 first. Look up our code descriptor, see what's going on. We're all the way in the forward in the baby blues. Oh, oh. How much time do we have, Twinkle? Oh, oh, five. Oh, oh, five. Sixty-one. I'm slow. There we go. Sixty-one. We can't do much with we need to go look at mama code which is our 60 and we know that by the abbreviation if you have not and you don't know what a mama and a child code is be sure to go to the front of your cpt book and read the instructions for use of the cpt code book on page x i v second column halfway through it says formatting of the terminology, it gives you some examples of example code 25100 and 25105. That's the differences in the mama and the child code. It's listed there, but keep watching me and you'll see more about what I'm talking about as the lives go. But we have to look at mama. Mama is our 60 code and it is on the heart, periodic sac, those kind of things. It's where the great vessels of the chest. It stops there. Then child picks up with a pump oxygenator. 
that's just like a cell saver or um, um, like um, a bypass for it. They want to know, do we need to add the 99100 code? That code is only added if your patient is over 70 or less than one year old. So age is the only factor I need to know out of this question. How old is our patient? Our patient is five months old. Since that CPT code descriptor does not have a patient's age listed in the descriptor. If you go look at code 00326 on the previous page, you'll note that the last few words of the CPT code descriptor says younger than one year of age. If the answer happened to be that answer, we would not use this 9 nine one hundred code because a patient's age is listed in the descriptor. This descriptor for our OO561 and its parent code 60 do not have an age listed in the CPT code descriptor. That means we have to add an extra code, right? To it or look at our parentheticals that tell us whether to use it or not. Our parenthetical happens to say on 00561 right underneath it, do not use 00561 in conjunction with our 99100 and any other qualifying circumstances codes. Those codes are located on page 77 in your guidelines and they're right there. That's where those codes are at just in case. And for this answer, our kid is five months of age, right? And our answer is B for this one. It's just the one code by itself because it is younger than five minutes. Thank you, Twinkle. And we've got that code 99100 cannot be used with our 00561. Normally they're always written in the parent code, but this one, it's not in the parent code, it's only in the child code. So it's totally cool and interesting. And I can see why they would pick that particular answer. All right, this one, let's see. We've got, don't pay attention to the question. Let's go to our codes. Looks like they're all going to be in a row. So I'll just go to the first one, 00842, 00842. So 42 is anesthesia for interperitoneal in the lower abdomen including a laparoscopic, which can be an amniocentesis, which is this one. And I think that's exactly what they had in that question, right? I wouldn't look any further. 44 is for peritoneal resection. We're not doing a resection. 46 is radical hysterectomy. And 48 is for our Externation. Externation. That's a crazy word. But yeah, our answer is B on that one. Super easy on that one. To figure up time, I've shown this question off a bunch of times. Oh, thank you. Thank you for all the dinos. Y'all are awesome. I've shown this question quite a few times. I'm gonna to have to make me up some new questions for this one, but what you need to do is find anything that says surgery, get rid of it. Surgery time, get rid of it. You don't need it. The only thing that you will ever be billing is anesthesia time, 
which starts when the anesthesiologist starts to put the patient asleep in the OR, not when they go and do a pre-op visit with them five minutes before then in the waiting area. And then when they turn the patient over to recovery is when it ends. So this one would be 51 minutes. Super easy. But just so you know. All right. Let's see. Let's see about this one. We've got a difference between just two sets of codes. Let's go look at our first one. Our 00210. 00210. We up here at the beginning. That is anesthesia inside the skull. All right, and then 20 is a shunt. So are we doing a random in the head surgery or are we doing a shunt? And right here we are doing a shunt. That's the last word. Awesome, so we can get rid of that and that. And we just need to know whether we would add that qualifying circumstance code or not. Our patient is extremely old. Does it have it in the parenthetical? I don't see anything listed about a patient's age in either mama or child. So I believe we would use it. So A would be the answer, right? Yes, A is the answer. Yep, yep, yep. That's it. Thank you, guys. Let me go check a different question. I want to go down here. I had some other cool ones. This one's got lots of modifiers with it. That'd be cool. All right. Let's go to this one. And we'll end our session on this one. Thank you for the 10,000 likes. Y'all are so sweet. I'm so glad you're loving this go-kart. Awesome. We'll do one more. All right. So this one's got three of them all the same. Let's go look up that code. Zero, one, nine, zero, one, nine, six, seven. I've got Epi Vag here in my notes. Let's see if they did an epidural. She performs a neural axle anesthesia. What does that tell you? Does that tell you that they are doing an epidural or not? Without Google because you won't have the Google <laughs> with you. It's in the CPT code descriptor, which is super handy for us. <clears throat> that is in our 67. It's not in the 60 descriptor, so that's helpful. Then we just need to know, did we do a 68 or a 61. So our 61 is for a C-section and then our 68 is for a C-section also. Which one would we use with that code? Do we have any parentheticals? It does say underneath the 68 that we're supposed to use it with the 67. So that boots out this one. Then we just have to know, do we do the QZ or do we do the QX? So we've got a non-medically directed CRNA. Hopefully you have taken all the hit picks modifiers out of the hit picks book, moved them to page 77 and put them here so that you can have those definitions or you have to get out your hit picks and look at them. But I put them all right there. And sorry, I don't have it focused and I'm not moving the crane. But 
that's where I put them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. You need to move to your anesthesia book um, from the um, hip picks book. That way you've got them all. They start with AA and they go all the way down to QZ and put them with here. That way you don't have to open up another book for the exam question. So are we at QZ, which is CRNA, no direction, and a QX is CRNA with direction by MD. So we know we're not the QX, so we can get rid of that one. And we are QB, QZ, I mean, QZ. We are QZ. And there's your rationale for that one. Non-medically. But I hope this has been helpful. Congrats again to the winners of the free notes and the tutoring. And I hope this was helpful today with all the anatomy. I think I've gotten like the last four lives. We've done so many anatomy questions. My anatomy quiz is just building up so much with so many questions. It's going to be, it's cool. I got a hundred pages right now full of anatomy questions back to back. So that's pretty cool. I've been trying to build up these questions. Um, to help you guys out too. Um, ooh, there's another one for for Wednesday. We'll go over that one on Wednesday when I start my next live. You take your exam on December 10th. Best of luck. Best of luck. Mom, I don't know if I have any tutoring open before December 10th. Lord, I've been so booked. I'm still tutoring seven days a week. It's crazy. Um, who am I tutoring tomorrow? As a matter of fact, who is that? Let's see if they are here. <coughs> Calendar. Who is tomorrow? A Amy? Amy. A-M-I-E. With a C. Let me send her her Zoom link. Unless she reschedules, if she reschedules, some do. Um, we'll see. Uh, she said she's going to be taking her CPC exam. Does she tell me what she wanted to go over? No, I don't have anything from her saying what she wants me to go over tomorrow. So if Amy happens to be around, I need to know what you want me to prep for your tutoring session tomorrow. Ah, and rhead55, be sure and send me a message on my website letting me know what days you want to tutor on. We will see. Um, I do have, well, all the tutorings are recorded and I give them the log on and password if they want to review them. Um, Zoom does delete them after about two weeks, but they are recorded by Zoom and you get to rewatch them. I've never posted those tutorings up for replays. I mean, those people pay, you know, for my time and I, I don't know. I wonder if they, I don't know if they'd mind it. Probably depends on if they want their voice heard over the internet. Some people are nervous about talking. <laughs> But I never thought about that. But anyway, um, they're, they are recorded. And if you want the log on and password after we tutor so you can rewatch it, um, then that's great. We usually do an hour and a half to two hours of whatever subjects you want to be quizzed on. And I teach you guidelines and everything that I'm doing here. But you get to actually speak instead of typing. And... Um, we go over questions and whatever you don't understand, I can explain it in a different way. And we go over the particulars that you want to go over, like E&M or surgery or integumentary, cardiovascular, those kind of things. <laughs> um, 
Um, just tell me when you are doing your tutoring with me and you can get a copy of the recording. Now these tutorings that I do here for free for you guys, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, those guys are downloaded and reposted onto YouTube for y'all to watch as much as y'all want for free. Yep, they're all on YouTube. And if you go to my website, medicalcodingbygen.com, just go there, medicalcodingbygen.com. You can click on the social media tab, the very first tab. You don't even have to join the website. You can go to this page. You can click on any one of these pictures, like the YouTube picture. Just click on it, and it'll take you straight to my YouTube page. And you could subscribe. You can watch um, all the recorded videos. I have, gosh, let's see. The lives, oh gosh, my playlist. There's my playlist. I've got CPT book book prep, which my subscribers get to see. Also the ICD-10, uh, the workshops, the um, subscribers get to see, but all the repeat lives are right there. There's 180 of them that you get to watch right there. The Also the... CPC exam advice tips that's 55 of them that are free too these up here are the ones that um, the subscribers for YouTube get to get to watch so that's helpful you're welcome guys I will see you back here on Wednesday at 6.30 Arizona time zone and we'll do it again the day before Thanksgiving. I hope to see you guys here. Hopefully y'all won't be too busy cooking. Maybe we can get a couple of hours in. We can do, I have some compliance more questions that I gathered this week. I wonder what else. Cardiology. I've been doing TikToks on cardiology this week and last week on TikTok. I need to do another one. I forgot today. Thank you, sunshine. All right, guys. I will see you again on Wednesday night. I hope this has been helpful. Look at there. Types of anesthesia. Anything you can get listed right here. Super good page to get listed. <laughs> yeah. Aw. I hope y'all can understand me when when um, English is is not your primary language. I hope I talk slow enough for you for sure. But you can follow the Facebook group. The best group to join is the Discord for sure. That is where all the tips and a lot of help and more practice questions are located for sure. All right, thank you, thank you. I will see y'all later.